Hey, what's up guys? Will here for GSM Arena. When you think of a Moto G series phone, you probably imagine a budget device with lower level specs, but some good battery life. The new Moto G100 turns that on its head though, offering more than any Moto G we've seen yet. Is this the right mid-ranger for you? Let's find out in our full review. The Moto G100 is a class above what we've seen from the Moto G series, and more like the higher tier Moto Edge phones. In fact, it's nearly identical specs-wise to the new Moto Edge S, which is only available in China. Our G100 has the iridescent ocean color scheme, which is gorgeous. While it's a frosted matte finish, it gives off a shiny metallic sheen that ranges from blue to purple. We're not sure what this back panel is made from, but it doesn't feel cheap. The phone does feel rather tall, and it isn't very light. Tricks like using the hardware key to summon the Google Assistant are difficult to pull off unless you use two hands. Even though the G100 doesn't have an official IP rating, it does have water-resistant coating on its internals, as well as a rubber seal on the SIM tray, so it can handle a splash or two. On the front is a 6.7-inch IPS LCD with a 1080p resolution, a fast 90Hz refresh rate, and a tall 21 by 9 aspect ratio. Another feature here that's a bit unusual is a dual selfie camera setup. Each camera has its own punch hole. This screen is decent. At 1080p, the resolution is a step up from the 720p we've seen on other recent Moto G phones. There's pretty good contrast for an LCD, and you get HDR support too. Brightness is good. We measured a max of around 500 nits with the slider, and a boost to around 610 nits in auto mode when out in bright sun. But the colors aren't too accurate here, trending toward bluish. Since the screen has a 90Hz refresh rate, fast movements, like when you're scrolling or swiping, will appear smoother than on a standard display. You can set the refresh rate to be adaptive too, and in this case, it will dial back down to 60Hz when you're not interacting with the screen to save energy. The Moto G100 has a single bottom firing speaker for audio, though we would have preferred a stereo setup. Loudness scores just average on our charts, and the sound quality is nothing special here either. You do have a 3.5mm jack here for plugging in traditional headphones too, if you want. The interface of the Moto G100 is pretty much the same as other recent Moto phones. It's pretty close to stock Android 11, but with some proprietary features added on top. These features are conveniently organized in the colorful and user-friendly Moto app. Here you can access plenty of customization options, including icon shapes, accent colors, and wallpapers. You'll find Moto's signature gesture shortcuts listed here too, including Karate Chop and Twist. Display-related features include Attentive Display, which keeps the screen on while you're looking at the phone. And Peak Display is a screen that displays time and notifications, which will show up when you move or lift the phone. Waking up and unlocking the Moto G100 is done with a side-mounted fingerprint reader, which doubles as the power button. It's quite responsive. And the Moto G100 has 128 gigs of storage on board, which is expandable, and you also get support for NFC here too, for contactless payments and connectivity. Speaking of connectivity, the G100 supports Motorola's new connectivity feature called Ready4. It allows you to connect the phone to a supported TV or display via a cable or a special dock, sold separately. This can achieve different things. For one, it can provide a desktop-like experience, where you can use the phone as a trackpad for controls. If you connect a mouse and keyboard, even better. Why spend money on a PC if you can just use your phone? Another way you can use this feature is for gaming on the big screen. This works best if you connect an external controller to get more of a console-like feeling. And the Ready4 connection is also useful for video calls, where you use the phone basically as a webcam. Behind all of these features is a powerful Snapdragon 870 chipset, which is basically last year's top chipset but with some higher CPU clock speeds on top. It's the next best thing after the Snapdragon 888, which you'd find in today's most premium phones. So of course, in benchmarks, the Moto G100 blows all of the other Moto Gs out of the water performance-wise, and also pretty much any other mid-ranger. There's enough power here to handle whatever you throw at it, including the heaviest game titles. And you have support for 5G network connectivity too. 
Powering the Moto G100 is a large 5,000 mAh battery, just like other Moto G phones we've seen so far this year. Battery life is a bit less here due to the more power-hungry screen and chipset. But still, the numbers are great. The G100 scored an endurance rating of 100 hours in our tests with the screen at 90Hz. The phone comes with a 20 watt charger in the box, and with it we were able to charge from a dead battery to 37% in half an hour. Okay, but nothing impressive. Now moving on to the G100's cameras. On the back, there's a 64 megapixel quad Bayer main cam, a 16 megapixel ultra wide camera with autofocus, and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. There's also a TOF laser autofocus. First, let's go over the quality of the main cam. Its 16 megapixel images are very sharp and detailed, and fine details and textures are natural looking. Colors are a little punchier than real life, and while there is a bit of graininess here and there, it's fine. Dynamic range could be better though, with some visible clipped highlights. Portrait shots have competent edge detection, as long as the subject's hair isn't too messy and the background isn't too complex. Although there's no telephoto camera on this phone, 2x digital zoom from the main camera is actually pretty sharp. A bit better than your typical simple crop and upscale. The ultra-wide camera's 16 megapixel images are good. They have okay sharpness and colors which are pretty close to the main cams. We like the distortion correction too, but dynamic range is rather narrow here. What's neat about the ultra-wide is that since it has autofocus, you can use it to shoot close-ups. These images are cropped and then upscaled back to 16 megapixels, but you still get plenty of detail. A unique feature on the G100 is that the ultra wide has its own ring flash to bring light to your close up subjects. This adds a lot more versatility, so you can take decent macro shots even in darker situations. The flash's light can be a bit harsh though. In low light, the main cam's photos are okay, but not great. Dynamic range is relatively narrow, so you'll get blown out light sources as well as dark, empty shadows. Night mode improves things quite a bit by keeping the highlights in check. The detail level in the midtones is better too. However, the shadows still come out too dark for our liking. Like most smartphone ultrawides, the G100s has poor performance at night. Images are soft with limited detail and dynamic range, and there's no support for night mode here. Now onto the dual front-facing selfie cams, starting with the 16 megapixel main one. It captures 4 megapixel binned photos by default, and these have enough detail with pleasing colors, and the phone does a good job in exposing for the face. Dynamic range is just average. If you need wider coverage, you can switch to the 8 megapixel ultra wide selfie cam. These are a little softer, and the skin tones are a bit more reddish, but it's definitely a nice option to have. Moving on to video recording. Thanks to the powerful chipset, the G100 can capture video from the rear main camera in up to 6K resolution at 30fps. 6K footage has plenty of detail, but suffers from a weird looking mesh effect. This pattern may be hard to see in our video sample due to YouTube's compression, but here's a screenshot for you to check out. 4K video can be recorded in up to 60fps. It has a lot of detail and next to no noise, with balanced sharpening. Dynamic range is rather narrow though. The ultra wide cam can shoot only in up to 1080p. This is sharp, detailed, and noise free, but the dynamic range is even more narrow here. There is electronic stabilization available on both cameras, and it does an excellent job in smoothing things out from the main cam's footage. The ultra wide is more prone to wobble, but it's still not bad. So that's the Moto G100. You get a snazzy looking and splash resistant design, a tall, high refresh rate LCD a flagship grade chipset, solid battery life, and a decent and versatile set of cameras. Plus, getting a PC-like interface by connecting this phone to a TV or monitor is something that you don't see too often. Keep in mind that this isn't the cheapest phone around, and you can find competitors with features that you miss here, like stereo speakers, fast charging, or an AMOLED screen. However, the overall package is pretty unique, and especially if you're looking for a high-performance Moto phone, the G100 is worth recommending. Thanks for watching guys, stay safe and see you on the next one.